Welcome to Top Moments of the Week in Star Trek Online Part 18. Oh, holy fucking shit. Are those early episodes boring? Man, we really cranked up the shit knob on this when we got around to 15, didn't we? Fucking entertaining as hell. I'm I'm saying things like fucking jamming a torpedo in your, your ass shooting. Well, I, I mean, except for now, but but goddamn, are we having fun? I feel bad for those people that are just starting to watch freaking episode like three now. You know, top moments in Star Trek Part Four and Part Five, and they're like, well, I mean, this this stuff's okay, but it's, it's not really that funny, and he doesn't really seem like he wants to be there. It's like, fuck! I just turned up the the dial oh shit. Um, fucking by the time we got to fifteen, fucking rabid master. Ah! Life, fucking everyone on the face. Everyone's face is covered with trip, with Star Trek goo Star right Trek. now. So <laughs> this is there's not really going to be too much spoilers, but for the most part, we're talking about Delta Rising again. So I mean, some of the moments there, we we get to up to the Harry Kim moments and whatnot, and uh, some stuff with Neelix too, and uh, the Vengeance storyline for Romulans. Uh, but like I said, I don't actually spoil any story, story stuff, so here we go! Oh, no, Mr. Tuvok, I'll thank you for this promotion. Oh, I just, I loved your character. I mean, I, I mean, I love you. I've been waiting to do this for like 30 years. Oh, oh. Oh, thank you, Mr. Tuvok. Thank you for this, this special moment. Oh, 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 it's all on my face. Oh, oh let me just finish this off. Mm. Oh, I miss you so much. Mm. Mm. Thank you for this opportunity. Oh, all right, here we go. Who's next? <laughs> so, y'all know about, about fucking Q's Winter Wonderland. Well, I never thought I'd see it, but apparently Santa Claus is teabagging Q right now. That's right. And once you've seen it, you can't unsee it. Now Santa Claus is dumping his balls into Q's mouth. And apparently he also turns someone else into a cat. And uh, and now random creatures. But yeah, Santa is literally putting his... his, his, his he's inserting the balls. There's species A472. You just you just saw it here, uh, kids. Santa went to town on on Q's face, and uh, I hope your childhood is ruined now. Uh, yes, Santa Claus has a ponytail apparently, uh, but it is Santa, obviously, uh, white beard and red outfit. And uh, and this is this is what you have to expect when you go to Q's Winter Wonderland. Um, yeah, you could get a, a tier six ship for free. And you could also fight giant snow creatures and help the snow conian, who is a giant snow cone, with a spoon, kill the abominable snowman that is threatening the gingerbread houses. I know, I know, it's fucked up, but it's it's Q's winter wonderland world, right? It's just kind of a shame that John Delancey uh, doesn't do a voice. That's only the kind of shame with a lot of these things. Like I mentioned, like Q and the automated... Uh, guys from before, from the Bellana Torres story. Uh, there's no voice acting uh, for any of this, so oh well. Okay, so as you're getting toward, you know, the end game and whatnot, or, you know, just basically level or rank uh, 50 and 60 in general, um, you're probably going to start paying more attention to your captain skills, right? Uh, not to mention... You know, your, your space skills, of course, because you're going to be engaging in a lot of space combat. But you're probably going to notice that, uh, you know, when you max out, or when you put a lot of points, like 24 or 27, like in one category, you get those three little extra buffs at the end. I'm not showing you the top part of the screen. But what I've heard is that from a lot of people, like those three extra buffs, they don't really amount to too much. You're actually better off... Uh, keeping a relatively good balance between other stuff and you'll probably actually notice there are people out there that do uh, specific build videos you know ones that might do a lot of upfront damage ones that are more uh, useful for certain ship types and all sorts of extremely detailed stuff I just want you to know that 
Um, you know, you probably, if you did it wrong, you can always retrain your skills. It might cost you a few real world dollars, uh, give or take here and there. But, uh, but you definitely should be going for, uh, you know, shield hardness, shield penetration, you know, uh, the extra hull penetration stuff. Um, you know, and, and just a lot of, a lot of those first ones. Um, and you can always add improved, you know, long range targeting later on and, and whatnot. But you definitely want to, uh, in that first category, that first rank, you want to give yourself you know, a, a lot of those first skills that improve your shields and your hull strength and just your overall capacity. So yeah, you might end up needing to retrain yourself a little bit, but hey, it's it's fully worth it. Do you have a drink for me? God damn it, Cassidy. Why the fuck do you make your way into every, well, it's not every video, but dear God, I'm gonna fucking find a phaser. I'm gonna take off the fucking coils. I'm gonna shove it in your fucking ass and pull the fucking trigger and see what happens. So, dear God, I love Seven of Nine. She's just so awesome, but what the hell? I mean, it's been, what, 30, 32 years later, or is it actually 42? But I mean, you you look the same. I mean, where's Chakotay? You were, you were all gonna get up in that Chakotay dick, that fucking Indian dick, I mean, Native American dick, man. What, what happened? Like, you, you couldn't be happy and have babies? They're just like, nope, seven to nine's gotta, she's gotta continue to have the stick in her ass. We gotta get rid of fucking Chicote cause you, he can't, she can't have the dick. Like you were, you were so close to being like more human. And we were thinking, yeah, that's what you, we want from a Borg, right? I mean, you get assimilated, it takes a little bit of transition time, and eventually, you get Chicote dick. But you didn't, you fucking left it. Avoid, and ignore my head in her crotch, it was just to get the footage. So here, here's fucking Q. Q is still fucking embezzled in the chair in my game. Like, I literally can leave and come back. I've gone through nearly half the Delta Quadrant and he's still halfway in his chair. So, I mean, fuck it. Embrace your chairness. So here I am, I'm running uh, probably a cluster torpedo. I think that's what that symbol means. And uh, I'm doing, shoot, is this Polaron? No, Polaron's a straight beam. Shoot, no, I think Polaron's the, the crooked beam, right? The crooked uh, white and blue energy. Yeah, I think I'm doing that, and I got a console that increases that. You know, you're going to see a lot of people that have a lot of ideas that you should, you know, all, use all beam weapons. Some people say you shouldn't have anything more than one torpedo uh, fore and aft. Um, you know what? Just find something that works for you. If you're not doing uh, player versus player, um, you know, you can basically do whatever feels good. Wow, that's what she said. But yeah, just go for it. And that was just a quick message about builds and stuff when it comes to your starships. You know, people people get kind of anal, but quite honestly, I think I've, I've said it before, but it's, it's a pretty robust system where a lot of different things are going to work for you. You know, I mean, double up your consoles on on certain damage. Th th anyway, this is this is for the uh, the reputation stuff. If you've noticed, you know, if you're getting those those marks for certain things, as you go up in that particular rank, like you get new equipment available to you, um, and it's actually very rare stuff. It's actually purple colored items. Like it'll all of a sudden be available to you now in uh, the shops and whatnot so you might really want to look you know at doing this reputation thing especially if you've gone past 50 and you're closing in on 60 you know you're going to be getting a lot of delta marks uh as you can see i got like nearly 300 so you know delta rank uh you know delta marks i'm sorry the dyson command stuff you know you're going to be getting marks and you know that's how you get some of the rare stuff is going up in rank. It takes a little while, but uh, it actually is pretty worth it. So try that out, reputation. It's so good to see. Doctor, it's been 30 years. You have an age today. Yes. Now the first exchange between the Doctor and Neelix is pretty fun and it, it time before we'll begin. We're giving It really captures the uh the relationship that kind of Neelix had or at least what Neelix the character should have been in the show. You must tell me all you've been up to. Oh, Neelix, I couldn't. Not with the Badwar here. In 
But I suppose it is important that you hear and it, it also kind of touches on his uh, naivete and his kind of self-centeredness from the show, too. Where it, it, it cuts back and forth of... Apparently they have a, such a long conversation. There I am back there with my two female uh, bridge officers. <laughs> just <laughs> going away. Like, so you want to come up to my place sometime? Uh, sir, we work for you? Oh, yeah. So you know where my, my room is, right? Oh, yeah, we know. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, this is, this is those, uh, the duty officers. Like, look how much stuff I'm getting there. I mean, some blue satellite turrets, uh, lots of diplomacy experience. There's certain things in the game that you can do and avoid conflict if you have a high enough diplomacy. Um, you get a lot of experience, too, especially if you, there's a double XP event that's going on. I mean, you really rake in the stuff. I mean, you can easily get yourself a, a good quarter of the way through a rank, uh, if not half, just by going through this stuff, even when you're a higher rank, like a 57 or a 58, uh, you know, when there's double XP going on. Look, I mean, just look at all this stuff. You definitely do not want to skip the duty officer stuff. So there comes a point in the story where you're going to find yourself here. If we rig the secondary power pylons to blow. Now, these guys are assholes. If you know the truth about the Vardwar, Vardwar, uh, whatever they're called, if you know their true origins, then you know how fucked up this is. And uh, this is on the Romulan side. The Romulans are the only ones that get this, but we're here basically to free our people. Uh, yeah, apparently these aren't warriors, but uh, apparently they still have fucking guns. So, let's kill them all! <laughs> fucking murder! Murder scientists! Die! <laughs> Fuck, I, I think he just fucking uh, drop-kicked a scientist, didn't he? D but believe me, when you know the truth, all these guys deserve to fucking die horribly and their genitals burned off. So... This is still that moment where we ran into Hugh from, uh, the next generation. You know, continuation of that Borg that was, uh, you know, basically turned good. That's his little picture down there. Um, I just wanted to clarify again that, you know, it's actually really fun having this one mission with Hugh. I mean, this ship is accurate to, uh, to the TV show and, you know, where we saw him leave. And, uh, it's just nice that he's out there trying to liberate other Borg and uh, and he's actually given us a weapon at this point where we can actually use it to liberate uh, entire just entire cubes of Borg so it's it's a really fun moment number three so I told you about Q's winter wonderland if you answer his question and you uh, you try to egg him on a little bit he turns you into certain creatures so he turned me into a Horda and I just thought it was pretty fun uh, sitting in a chair like it's a waiting room as an acid dripping horda. <laughs> so it's just, he'll turn you into like species 8472. He'll turn you into uh, a couple of the different uh, cats uh, and little kitten variations of other uh, creatures. And uh, that's pretty fun too, running around as a little uh, uh, saber kitty or whatever. But uh, I just thought this is. I had so much fun going around as a little. Uh, the acidic rock version of the Horda. You know, just sitting next to this fucking bullion on a bench. That's me and my pet Horda. Do -do 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 -do. You know, just... Uh, it's like, my Horda. My Horda and me. Just going around fucking... <laughs> now, you know, it's, it's only really cool to the people that are like, what the fuck is that? How'd that player turn himself into a Horda? How do you pilot a fucking ship? when you're a goddamn lava creature. So I'm up on the bench like, fucking look at me. You will know I am here. <laughs> yeah, it's just fucking, God, it was so much fun. This is why you play video games. So you could do shit like this. I mean, you know, who would have thought? It's one episode in the original series. You know, if you haven't seen it, I mean, uh, you know, a couple of red shirts die. No, I don't want to fucking adjust my ship dick. Um, I don't, yeah, you, if you're, I'm hitting A to jump up, but I'm obviously triggering, uh, you know, talking to some people. Uh, obviously, if you've if you played for a couple of days, then you know, you know why I was changed into this creature. Uh, but I just, it was, it was just so much fun. I mean, seriously, I will, 
I will remember this on my deathbed. I'll be like, honey, you remember that time? I yes, you won't shut up about the fucking time you turned into a goddamn acidic rock creature. It's like, okay, honey, thanks a lot. And it ended. Number two. So there's a moment where uh, this is a shuttle only mission on the Romulan side. It's during the Alici. Uh, when, when you're fighting them, the, uh, was it Vengeance, I believe? Storyline. And, uh, and for like just literally one mission, you get to fly around here and defend it. Now you're here for probably a good, ah, uh, 30 minutes or so, but, uh,. I just thought this was kind of a cool, a cool design, you know, they could have just thrown, you know, a regular starship here and whatnot, and it probably wouldn't look to, as big of a place, I don't know, but, uh, I thought it was pretty cool, you know, kind of, kind of, uh, someone really went to some trouble, you know, to do the, the biodomes, the, the awnings, really took their time. Here's number one. So this is Gaul, if... While you're fighting in the Delta Quadrant, Gaul is the character that is really going to take the cake at at a certain point. Uh, his voice actor is done. There, see, there's my two uh, two bitches in the back. The food's almost ready. What would you all like for your main course? But yeah, he he really steals the show, and he really makes this personal. fraction of our. Okay, it's it's gonna end up being a setup. Yeah, he 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 kills the cook friend of Neelix. He's dead. I'm sorry. The doctor can't do anything, and, and really, uh, Nathan Phillips, right? He plays Neelix. He does such a wonderful job conveying the emotion. It makes me sad. For <laughs> and for you. I mean, it, 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 it's no seriously. He really does a good job, and Gaul really amps things up. I don't know if if Neelix and uh, and the Doctor uh, by Robert Picardo. I don't know if they were all there or they could play off of his lines, but it it, it really is. It's probably one of one of the most uh, emotional moments that they have done so far in this story, and it's really thanks to to the acting from Neelix, and, and Robert Picardo does a great job too as the doctor. Um, it, it's just, it's a it's a great moment. Uh, you might even uh, tear up a little bit during it, cause, I mean seriously, it's really done well, and you really hate this guy. You really want to see his balls put in a vice, set on fire, and then thrown to the Targs. See, see what I did there? I added Star Trek references for you freaks! <laughs> 